Lesson 10.2, Customary Capacity, Liquid Volume. Customary measures are also called U.S. Standard measures. Capacity is the amount of room or space inside, and it's the largest amount that can be held by a container. We can compare and convert customary units of capacity. So here are some customary units of liquid volume. We have cup, pint, quart, one half gallon, and one gallon. To compare and convert customary units of capacity, first we use division to convert the smaller unit to the larger unit, or use multiplication to convert the larger unit to the smaller unit. Then we use less than, greater than, or equal to symbols to compare the units. We divide to convert smaller to larger units, going from ounces to cups, or cups to pints, pints to quarts, or quarts to gallons, we're going to divide. Division will decrease the number of units. We multiply to convert larger units to smaller units. Cups are larger than ounces, so to go from cups to ounces, we would multiply. And for pints to cups, quarts to pints, or gallons to quarts, multiplication will increase the number of units. Sanjay has a container with five cups of juice in it. He also has a pitcher with a capacity of 32 fluid ounces. Will the pitcher hold all of the juice that Sanjay has? Well, according to our table, one cup is equal to eight fluid ounces. And we need to convert cups, larger units, to ounces, smaller units, with multiplication. We can use a bar model to help us write an equation. He has five cups. We make five boxes. There's eight fluid ounces in each cup. That means he's got 40 fluid ounces of juice. Five total cups times eight fluid ounces in one cup is 40 fluid ounces. And since 40 fluid ounces is greater than 32 fluid ounces, Sanjay's pitcher will not hold all the juice. This is how much juice he has, and this is how much the pitcher will hold so it will not hold all the juice. Emma made 12 cups of lemonade for a party. She needs to carry the lemonade in one quart containers. How many containers does Emma need? So we need to convert cups, which are smaller units, to quarts, which are larger units, with division. And using the table, we'll need to convert more than once. We're going from cups to quarts. So we need to go from cups to pints and then pints to quarts. She has a total of 12 cups. There's two cups in one pint. That's six pints. Now that we have six pints, we divide it by two pints in one quart. That's equal to three quarts. So the number of units will decrease going from cups to quarts. She's going to need three one quart containers to bring the lemonade to the party. We convert units of capacity like we convert units of length. And we need to divide when converting smaller units into larger units. So think, divide, decrease, and they both start with D. Three feet is equal to one yard, so six feet is equal to two yards. We have two of them. We have three feet two times. Six feet divided by three feet in each yard is two yards. Four quarts is equal to one gallon. So eight quarts is equal to two gallons. Eight quarts divided by four quarts in each gallon is two gallons. And we need to multiply when converting larger units into smaller units. So think multiply, increase. One foot is equal to 12 inches. That's a larger unit. We're converting it into smaller units. So this is going to be greater. If one foot is 12 inches, then two feet is 24 inches. We have two 12s. Two feet times 12 inches in each foot is 24 inches. And one cup is eight fluid ounces, so two cups is 16 fluid ounces. We have two eights. Two cups times eight fluid ounces in each cup is 16 fluid ounces. Looking at this table, we can see a pattern of twos if we include half gallons. One gallon is equal to two half gallons. One half gallon is equal to two quarts. 
one quart is equal to two pints, one pint is equal to two cups. And there's a copy of this chart on the Joanne School Facebook page in the photo section, Grids, Charts, Tables folder, and there might be some other nice charts and tables in there that you can use, print and copy. We need to convert 64 fluid ounces to pints. So ounces are smaller than pints, so we're going from smaller to larger, so we're going to use division. 64 fluid ounces can be split up into cups and then cups to pints. There's 8 fluid ounces in a cup, so that means 64 divided by 8, that's 8 cups. We have 8 cups, there's 2 cups in 1 pint, 8 cups divided by 2 cups in 1 pint is equal to 4 pints. That means 64 fluid ounces is equal to 4 pints. Here we have 3 gallons that needs to be converted to pints. We're going from a larger unit, gallons, to a smaller unit, pints, so we're going to use multiplication. We have 3 gallons times, there's 4 quarts in a gallon, that gives us 12 quarts. So now we're at quarts, we need to change it to pints. 12 quarts, there's 2 pints and 1 quart. 12 times 2 is 24, that's 24 pints. So sometimes we'll need to convert 2 times. We need to compare the units and write less than, greater than, or equal to in the circle. Here we have 30 pints compared to 12 quarts. And we can use the table if we need. We think there's 2 pints and 1 quart. So 30 pints divided by 2 pints in each quart, that's 15 quarts. 30 pints is equal to 15 quarts, and that's greater than 12 quarts. Here we're comparing 8 gallons to 32 quarts. 1 gallon is equal to 4 quarts, and we have 8 of them. 8 gallons times 4 quarts in each gallon, that's 32 quarts. These are equal to each other. Here we need to compare 4 quarts and 18 cups. Well, 1 quart is 2 pints and 1 pint is 2 cups. We can draw a quick picture to help us. If we have 4 quarts, we can make 4 boxes and each of these quarts is 2 pints, so we can write 2 inside each box. That's 8 pints. Now, we can make 8 boxes for the 8 pints and each pint is two cups, so we could put a two in each of the eight boxes. That's 16 cups. So we're comparing 16 cups to 18 cups. And 16 cups is less than 18 cups. Here we're comparing 50 fluid ounces to four pints. There's eight fluid ounces in a cup and two cups in a pint. So we're going to have to convert it two times. We can convert the pints to, cup, to ounces or ounces to pints. It would be easier to convert the four pints into ounces in this case. We have eight fluid ounces times two cups. That's 16 ounces in one pint. There's two cups in one pint, eight fluid ounces in a cup. So we have two of them. We have an eight and an eight. That's 16 ounces in one pint. We have four pints, so we can do 16 times four that's equal to 64 fluid ounces. So 4 pints is greater than 54 fluid ounces, which means 54 fluid ounces is less than 4 pints. Now the reason I converted the 4 pints into ounces was because if I converted the 50 fluid ounces into pints, I would have had a mixed measure. So in this case, it was easier to go from the 4 pints to see how many ounces they were to compare them. We need to complete the table and make a graph showing the relationship between gallons and quarts. And we learned about filling these tables out and writing ordered pairs and graphing, plotting our points in videos 9.2, 9.3, and 9.6. And if you don't know how to do this and you missed it, they're linked in the description so you can watch them very quickly. So here we have a sequence for our gallons going from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then our quarts starting at 0. When we have 0 gallons, we have 0 quarts. And it's telling us when we have 1 gallon, we have 4 quarts. So what is the relating rule for the sequences? If 1 
is 4, then that's 1 times 4. We need to multiply by 4. And since the rule is multiply by 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 4 is 16. Now we can use this table to make our ordered pairs. And because 1 gallon is equal to 4 quarts, we can use that rule, multiply gallons by 4, to find the number of quarts. Now that we have our ordered pairs for x and y, we can plot them on the graph. 0, 0, that's the origin. We have 1 for x, 4 for y, so we go for 1 for x to 4 for y, and we put a point here. We go 2 for x, 8 for y, here's 2 for x, 8 for y, we put a point there. 3 for x, 12 for y, we go 3 for x, 12 for y, we put a point there. And 4 for x, 16 for y, 4 for x, 16 for y. We were able to plot the points. And remember, because the relating rule is multiplication, it's going to make a straight line. It's going to have the same steepness going all the way up. So as you're converting these, be very, very careful that you divide to convert smaller to larger and you multiply to convert larger to smaller. Our next lesson, 10.3, we're going to talk about how to compare and convert customary weight. And I hope you're doing well, and I'm proud of you for watching math videos, and I hope you'll join me next time. Bye.